द टॉपिक ऑफ दिस प्रेजेंटेशन इज किंगडम एनिमेलिया पार्ट फाइव फाइलम प्लेटी हेलमेंथिस इन दिस टॉपिक वी विल डिस्कस बेसिक एंड की फीचर्स ऑफ द फाइलम प्लेटी हेलमेंथिस द ऑर्गेनिजम ऑफ दिस फाइलम आर वर्म लाइक एंड डॉर्सो वेंट्रली फ्लैटेंड देयर फॉर दीज ऑर्गेनिजम आर कॉल्ड फ्लैट वर्म्स प्लीज वॉच द वीडियो किंगडम एनिमेलिया पार्ट वन बेसिस ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन बिफोर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो टू अंडरस्टैंड द टॉपिक इन अ बेटर वे लेट्स डिस्कस द बेसिक फीचर्स ऑफ दिस फाइलम फर्स्ट दीज ऑर्गेनिजम हैव ऑर्गन लेवल ऑफ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ब्लाइंड सेग बॉडी प्लान बायोलेट्रल सिमेट्री एंड दीज ऑर्गेनिजम आर ए सिलोमैटर ट्रिप्लोब्लास्टिक कंडीशन हैज इवॉल्व बट द ट्रू बॉडी सिलोम हैज नॉट येट इवॉल्व सो दिस कंडीशन इज नोन एज ए सिलोमैटर कंडीशन ऑर्गेनिज्म हैव स्यूडो सेगमेंटेशन स्यूडो मीन्स फॉल्स फॉल्स बॉडी सेगमेंटेशन हैज इवॉल्व इन दिस फाइलम and uh, we see both types of digestion intracellular as well as extracellular digestion in these organisms these organisms are mostly endoparasites a few free living forms are called planarians one more thing here we have discussed these points in detail in our presentation kingdom animalia part 1 now we will discuss some unique features of this phylum the first feature is these organisms have branched or forked digestive tract it will be crystal clear with the help of this diagram here we have shown the diagram of planaria and this is its branched intestine the branches of intestine form a fork like structure here we have also shown diagram of fascicula hepatica it too has branched intestine see this is the branched intestine of fascicula hepatica its sub branches are distributed in whole body so that digested matter could be absorbed locally into its tissues so in this way we have seen the branched digestive tract in these organisms in these organisms excretion occurs with the help of nephridia or flame cells these nephridia are distributed in whole body in the form of a network see here in the diagram these minute cells are the flame cells and here we have shown a longitudinal section of a flame cell these cells have cilia to cause the flow of body fluid through them when these cilia beat body fluid enters these slits and then travels through these tubules to the nephridiopore as the body fluid travels through the tubule most of the useful solutes like glucose amino acids minerals etc are reabsorbed into the body fluid and the remaining fluid rich in nitrogenous waste exits the body through excretory or the nephridio pore one more thing we want to tell our students here that why these cells are called flame cells see here when these cilia beat they appear like a flickering flame of a candle that's why these cells are called flame cells next unique feature of these organisms is ladder like nervous system see in the diagram these organisms have two longitudinal nerve cords and these two longitudinal nerve cords are connected to each other with the help of these transverse nerves so this kind of arrangement gives a ladder like appearance which is very clearly shown in this diagram so this, these organisms have a ladder like nervous system now we will discuss classification of platy helminthes class 1 is turbellaria organisms of this class are free living and are commonly called planarians and we have already discussed this point that these organisms have branched digestive system and regeneration capacity is remarkable in these organisms as we see in case of planaria here in the diagram we have shown that if the planaria is cut into sections then each section will regenerate into a whole organism in this way these organisms show remarkable regeneration capacity 
क्लास टू इज ट्रेमाटोडा एंड ऑर्गेनिज्म ऑफ दिस क्लास टू हैव ब्रांच और फोक्ड डाइजेस्टिव ट्रैप एंड दीज ऑर्गेनिज्म आर हर्माफ्रोडाइट मेल एंड फीमेल सेक्स ऑर्गन्स आर प्रेजेंट इन द सेम इंडिविजुअल एंड हियर आर द सम एग्जाम्पल्स Fasciola, commonly known as liver fluke, and schistosoma, it is commonly known as blood fluke. Here we want to tell our students one exceptional case. Schistosoma has the separate sexes. This uh, uh, species, this genera, occurs as a separate male and female. Here in the diagram we have shown these male and female schistosoma, and one very unique feature is seen in schistosoma that the male has a groove-like structure, and this special structure is called gynecophoric canal, and in this canal the female lives. The female lives in this gynecophoric canal. So this is very unique feature of blood fluid or schistosoma. Class three is cystoda. Organisms of this class lack digestive system. As the organisms are endoparasites of small intestine, and they absorb the digested food directly from their body surface. So these organisms do not require any digestive system. And these organisms also have pseudo segmentation. tapeworms are the examples of this class with the help of this diagram we will now discuss morphology of tinea solium so that we could understand its life cycle better as explained ahead see here it is the scolex of this tinea solium and this scolex has suckers and hooks with the help of which it gets firmly attached to the intestinal wall we'll discuss its structure in detail later and this is the neck region of the uh, tinea solium from where body segments are proliferated one more thing we must tell you here that tinea solium is hermaphrodite and each body segment has male and female sex organs now newly formed body segments are immature so these are the immature body segments in which male and female sex organs are not yet developed as these body segments move towards posterior end the sex organs are developed and now these body segments are the mature body segments or mature proglottids and now fertilization occurs in these body segments gametes fuse to form zygotes which further develop to form oncospheres during this development the body segments grow enormously in size and all parts except uterus will degenerate now this uterus will become highly branched and full of countless oncospheres such body segments having highly branched uterus full of numerous oncospheres are called gravid proglottids so these are the gravid proglottids of tinea solium let's discuss about tinea solium in more detail see here in the diagram scolex is shown it has row of hooks which is called rostellum and these are the suckers rostellum and suckers together form the scolex and this organ is also called organ of adhesion with the help of which tinea solium gets attached firmly to the intestinal wall of the host and this is the neck region from where the body segments are proliferated throughout the life here we have shown a highly magnified view of a mature body segment in which both male and female sex organs are present in this way tinea solium is a hermaphrodite organism now we will discuss some terms related to life cycle of tinea solium first term is digenetic life cycle we find digenetic life cycle in uh, tinea solium which means two hosts are required by this organism to complete its life cycle in case of tinea solium one host is human which acts as primary host here by primary host we mean that the host in which 
tinea solium has its reproductive phase and spends most of its life cycle and secondary host is pig in which there occur some of the larval stages of this organism after learning all this about tinea solium we will now be able to understand its life cycle easily let's now study life cycle of tapeworm in brief we have already learned that life cycle of tapeworm is digenetic human is the primary host and pig is its secondary host starting with human there occurs an adult form in the small intestine of human sexual reproduction takes place in adult consequently zygotes are formed which will develop to form oncospheres we have already told you about gravid proglottids which are full of oncospheres we see a very interesting phenomenon here that these gravid proglottids get detached from the body of tapeworm by a process called apolysis a p o l y s i s apolysis gravid proglottids getting detached from the body now these gravid proglottids come out of the body of host along with feces and if a pig feeds upon this feces then these onco oncospheres enter its body here these oncospheres will soon transform into next stage called bladder worms these are the bladder worms and these bladder worms travel through blood circulation of pig and get settled in the muscles of this host now this pig is called infected with bladder worms and its meat is called misli pot if a human consumes this infected misli pot then these bladder worms will reach the small intestine of primary host here bladder worm will undergo some developmental stages to become an adult so in this way tapeworm completes its life cycle in two hosts here the primary host is human and secondary host is pig cysticercosis is a very dangerous infection caused by tinea solium the case we have just discussed is tiniasis which means infection of tinea solium in small intestine this is called tiniasis this infection can be seen only in non vegetarians who might have consumed misli pork or infected pork but this infection cysticercosis might also occur to a vegetarian as this infection generally occurs through vegetables let's understand it with the help of this diagram so this is a primary host in which this adult tinea solium lives and the proglottids full of oncospheres come out of this host body along with feces if this feces is present in a crop field then oncospheres will reach the soil and will stick to the vegetables like spinach and coriander leaves and cabbage etc as these vegetables are in close vicinity to the soil now if these vegetables are consumed by a human without washing them properly then oncospheres will now reach small intestine of human and in the small intestine larvae will be hatched from the cyst and will be distributed throughout the body of this host through blood circulation these larvae affect this host in various ways depending on which body part they have reached through blood for example the person might become blind if these larvae settle in some blood capillaries of eye or he might suffer from epilepsy if these worms settle in brain so in this way this infection is very dangerous and must be avoided hygiene is the only preventive measure of this infection wash green vegetables thoroughly before consuming them spinach coriander cabbage are health promoting food but consume them with due hygiene and precaution and avoid street food as much as possible 
Let's discuss life cycle of liver fluid in brief. It is digenetic parasite which completes its life cycle in two hosts. Cattle or sheep is its primary host and snail is its secondary host. This organism is hermaphrodite. Both male and female sex organs are present in the same organism. Sexual reproduction occurs in liver or bile duct of the primary host where it lives. Fertilized eggs come out of the body of host along with feces. If this feces is dropped near some water body, then free swimming miracidia larvae will come out of the eggs and which now infect the snail. Some larval stages occur in snail's body and finally cercaria larvae come out of the snail's body. And these cercaria larvae are also free swimming forms which settle on grass blade and become encysted. Such encysted larvae are called metacercaria. If a cattle or sheep feeds upon such grass, then metacercaria will now enter the body of primary host. Reaching the intestine, hatching will occur and larval form now bores through the small intestinal wall, enters the blood circulation and through blood it now reaches and settles in liver or bile duct. So this is the life cycle of liver fluke. If you are preparing for some competition, then this information might be very helpful to you. Here we have shown the sequence of larval stages. Sporocyst and radia, uh, these larval stages occur in snail's body. This information is not shown here in the diagram. A very interesting phenomenon is seen during life cycle of liver fluke called polyembryoning which means that one larval form multiplies during its transformation to another larval stage. It means that one egg will not develop into one metacercaria, rather one egg will develop into numerous metacercaria. As a result, survival rate of this organism increases manifold. This is a kind of adaptation for increasing chances of perpetuation of its species. Please check your understanding by answering these questions.